So we're back once again with the latest from Ambernick, the RG405V. Man, there's so many of these handhelds. It does get a little uh, confusing at times. Uh, some companies do better than others, but I do think Ambernick is one of the best out there when it comes to these little emulation handhelds. And I've been using this one. I like it quite a bit, to be honest with you, but there's no, no denying it. It's just another version of the same device. Like, that's what these companies do. They make different variations of the same thing over and over again. And it's kind of up to you to decide, like, hey, which version do you like the best? The, you know, orientation, the screen size typically is what changes with a lot of these. Oh, it does come with a screen protector. Nice. USB-C charge cable. But let's take a look at this thing. So there's three different versions or colors, not versions. I mean, there's multiple versions that have the same chipset. But this one, I really like the look of this, man. You got that fan accessible there. You know, it's kind of got, got some slits in there. Big fat ass 5,000 milliamp hour battery. You're supposed to get like eight to nine hours battery life with this thing. Not too many uh, ports or anything. You got audio, power, volume up and down. And then on this side, you do have micro SD cards. So go Game Geek sent me this for purpose to review and they do sell it with no games with games uh in a 128 gigabyte micro sd and then a 256 gigabyte so we got the 128 so there are some built-in games here ready to go and then on the top just USB C for uh charging i kind of like that like you got some ventilation up there there's not a lot of like ports and that's that's fine we got what we need here uh, but what does this thing entail what do we have in here so the CPU we have, let me power this thing on, but the CPU is a T618 64-bit, uh, so what, like the, the freaking Nintendo 64 here? But it's an 8-core chip. I'm just going off of the specifications they list on the website. Uh, the GPU is a Mali G52. It does also have, besides that, that micro SD card, it also has 128 gigabytes built-in storage, and then 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, so you got a little bit of RAM there. Has Bluetooth 5.0, 2.4, and 5G Wi-Fi, Android 12, and like I said, that big large ass battery back there. Hall Effect joysticks. You do have rumble. You have a uh, six axes gyro sensor. So that's kind of cool. And this is a touch screen. I do like this. Now I've already recorded a bunch of footage trying some games, but we're going to go through this real quick. So your standard, uh, you know, Android setup here, you got a bunch of applications that are already included. Moonlight. Hey, they got the Play Store on there. Nice. So all your emulators and stuff like that, you can go through and, and mess with things that way. But like their other Android-based systems, if you just simply go up here, you do have that Ambernic mode. But they also have that hotkey right here that you press just to instantly go in there. Then you do have like the fan options, auto on, off, cool, strong. Uh, and then you also have CPU mode, high, auto, and then key mapping. And then uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Switch mode or Xbox mode. It's just how the buttons wind up registering. So I kind of like that they have that. So yeah, some you got, you know, besides that, just basic Android system here. If you press this button, bam, we go to the games. So there's not like a buttload of games included on this build, but I want to kind of go through, I'm going to go through essentially 99% of the systems here just to kind of mention everything and show footage from everything. But every system here that they have included runs mostly fine, like it's really game specific. I did find a couple systems where games didn't run, but overall every system on here is gonna be fine. All your old stuff, they got NES on here, 498 uh, games. Let me zoom up a little bit. You got 498 games. Don't get used to this because most of the stuff they don't have artwork, so you don't know what the heck's going on. But there, there are some weird bootlegs in here, not too many. Uh, it's mostly a clean setup. A lot of Japanese ROMs type of thing. And you'll notice, like going through a lot of these Nintendo systems, it'll stop at like a certain uh, a certain spot. Maybe the, the R's or something, or the way it'll be mixed up. 
There's no like Super Mario games on here at all for any system that would have a Super Mario game. You can add them yourself, no problem. But yeah, NES is gonna run fine. And then Sega Master System, you got 197 games. A lot of fun playing these. This screen is really nice in my opinion. Uh, most of my footage that I recorded was at like 40% brightness. I didn't realize that, but I think even then it looked good. So that's fine, but yeah, a lot of uh, Sega Master System games. You're not gonna have any issues with stuff like that. PC Engine, the same thing. Like I tested Jackie Chan, freaking love that action kung fu. One of my favorite games on the system, but you got 59 games. No PC Engine CD games here, but the system definitely could play those if you wanna add them. CPS1, I played uh, Alien vs. Predator. They got all the CPS1 games here. They do have CPS2 and 3. CPS2 ran fine, CPS3 as well. Uh, Sega Genesis. Sega Genesis, we got 636 games. A lot of classics here. Doesn't have any issues running. It really shouldn't, not with a system like this. Game Boy, I really like playing Game Boy on a system like this. It's really awesome. But we got 208 games. I like that it's not like 2,000 games because then you just get a lot of junk and weirdness. But for sure, you're not getting the full ROM sets for each system here at all. But as you see, you start, you do start losing uh, screenshots, like they just don't have them. So the one thing like that I wanna point out real quick is the shoulder buttons. Um, I've kind of gotten used to them, but initially that was my first complaint is like, cause you see how you like, you could put your finger over it and you could like easily hit, you know, R1, R2. But I find with how they're like, fl they're like flush against the back you could accidentally hit them if you're not trying to because just like any tiny bit of pressure will register those. And then some of these systems, the way the emulator is already set up, it might like go uh, like increase the speed type of thing in the game by accidentally hitting this stuff. So you may have to uh, change that or just kind of get used to the way they are. They're not bad. They're actually kind of nice, but I did fall into a few issues like that. Neo Geo, we got 144 games, which is pretty close to the full library, so no like crazy fluff. Runs just fine. SNES, 606 games, but no Super Mario, no Super Mario at all. But you're not gonna have any issues playing those games. The screen is a uh, a four inch IPS touchscreen. I already mentioned it was touchscreen, but it's 4.3 aspect ratio, 640 by 480p. Uh, really nice screen in my opinion. CPS2, we already talked about, you got the 29 games. Sony PlayStation 1, only 46 games here. But hey, they run, they run just fine. There's no issues playing Mortal Kombat 4, which is better than Mortal Kombat 1 on the Switch. It plays way better, maybe a little more enjoyable, but yeah, PS1, very nice. Sega Saturn, this is the one system that I ran into an issue. We only got six games, like you got, uh, Sexy Parodius, which would not run. Like I would boot it up and it would just crash after I selected my character and it would just, nothing would happen. And then Street Fighter the movie, that game ran fine. Nintendo 64, there's only a handful of games as well, but they run just fine. F-Zero X running like, it seemed like full speed. MAME, they, they had a, a few games here, 23 games, not too many, but Things are gonna run decently well there, no problem. You might find, like I said, game specific stuff, right? Game Boy Color, like I said, I love playing these like, these handhelds on the system. Like the system feels really comfortable in my hands, but yeah, this isn't like, unless you got cargo pants and some big fat ass pockets, like this ain't going in your pocket, dude, but this is really comfortable with the curved edges and everything, nothing sharp about it. And then like the D-pad and the buttons, they're typical Ambernick. Maybe a little stiff, but they work fine. I think the the ABXY, the face button, say they sit kind of high. What else? So Game Boy Color is cool. Dreamcast, only a few games here. They all play fantastically well and look great on the screen. Neo Geo Pocket and Pocket Color, 37 games, runs great. PS2, there's 11 games here. PS2 may be the limit here. Like GameCube should be fine. On this, I've tested GameCube on this chipset before, but I don't think there's any GameCube here. But PS2, uh, it seems like most of this stuff was running fine. God of War 2, it might have seemed slightly slow, but it was very playable. Like, I barely noticed any issue there. Game Boy Advance looks excellent on the screen as well and plays great. So no issue with Game Boy Advance. There's 300 games, but no Super Mario games. PSP, we got 50 games. 
and they all play decently well. So yeah, you're gonna get like great performance out of PSP, like GameCube, stuff like that. Nintendo DS plays well, but you know, screen orientation issues. Kind of nice that you could just select little on-screen command, like uh, touch commands, like just touch screen, select how you want the screen orientated. Uh, but some decent games here. You got Super Princess Peach, but no Super Mario. And then we have a uh, Wii, or you could combine it with uh, GameCube here. And uh, we only have five games included, and they play great, like Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. And then uh, 3DS, we have a handful of games here. 3DS is going to be kind of hit and miss, depending, you know, because of the emulation. But uh, I played uh, Rayman Origins, and it was nice, you know, changing the screen how you want it, going into the options, that kind of thing. But overall, I really, I love the size of this. I love the orientation of it. Everything feels great. It's probably one of my favorite ones out there, man. Like, yeah, that's saying a lot. Like, I mean, but every person's going to be different. You may hate the, the look of this, the shape of it, the design of it, but me... I really like it. So, I mean, yeah, everybody, hey, I'm sure in another month there'll be a new one, right? There'll be a new version that's like maybe shaped like a triangle. I don't know. But let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Bye.